This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. Check out this free coin offer for my viewers. If you've been thinking about investing safer so you can retire comfortably and sleep at night, it might be time to talk to Noble Gold about the tax advantages and other pluses of those precious metal IRAs. Of course, you might just love uncertainty, but if you don't, this month, Noble Gold are giving away a free America the Beautiful solid silver five ounce coin with any qualifying IRA you start. Call us at 877-646-5347 or visit our website at noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Or you can just find the link in the description or pinned comment. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. The statue of Thomas Jefferson in the city council chamber has been removed. The statue was taken down from its pedestal earlier today to be moved to the New York Historical Society. Some council members had objected to its presence because of Jefferson's history as a slave owner. Remember way, 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 way back when the left was tearing down historical Confederate statues statues and Trump warned us that giving in to these people would eventually lead to the tearing down of all American history like Washington and Jefferson. Excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of to them a very very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history, you're changing culture. Predictably, the Democrat state media actually mocked Trump for this warning, insisting that those statues were completely different. They paraded around a bunch of so-called historians and experts to discredit the right-wing conspiracy theory. Real quick before I let you go, I, anytime you're here in New York, I have to tap your uh, historian bona fides. Uh, I'm an amateur historian. What? I, I want you to just clarify for our viewers uh, briefly the distinction to be made between slave-owning presidents and founding fathers. Uh, when you are in rebellion against the founding ideals of the country, um, that is vastly different than being a creator of those founding ideals. And that's the massive distinction. To focus on uh, similarities, again, much further down the list is to misunderstand the prioritization of the moral uh, elements that are at the top of the list. It's true that one could argue that any slave owner should not be honored. But there aren't any cities taking down memorials to Washington or Jefferson. That, while their profiting from enslavement mars their character, Washington and Jefferson had historic accomplishments that makes them worthy of celebration. We honor them despite their record on slavery. The Confederacy is different. Even more bizarre was the media's take that Trump's warning was actually comparing Jefferson and Washington to Confederate generals, meaning that they were spinning it as Trump attacking George Washington and Jefferson. At a recent press conference and multiple times on Twitter, President Trump has drawn comparisons between Confederate General Robert E. Lee. About this whole Robert E. Lee thing, I'm nothing like that guy. I created this country, he tried to tear it apart. We've all done bad things, but the difference between us and Robert E. Lee is that we also did good things. The New York Times is the same, with these snooty articles quoting Yale University professors who mock Trump's prediction, saying things like, Trump's warning of a slippery slope is a red herring. There have been, after all, no calls to tear down Washington monuments. How could they not know that Jefferson, Washington, and even the American flag were gonna be the next target? Of course of course they knew, but they were lying in order to give their Antifa and BLM foot soldiers cover. Just look at how CNN hack John Avalon reacts to one of their own openly admitting that their plan is to destroy American history. And so to me, I don't care if it's a George Washington statue or a Thomas Jefferson statue or a Robert E. Lee statue, they all need to come down. There is a way that we can recognize yeah, Angela, and appreciate. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking. You're, 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 you're I'm, but I'm not, but I'm not, but I'm not, but I'm not, no, 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 but I'm not, but I'm not, but I'm not. I'm, John, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my point. 
I'm going to finish my point. He didn't disagree with what she said or even attempt to push back. He was just mad that she was openly stating their goals. The very same thing happened with Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo, where Lemon was whining that he was being criticized for openly admitting that he wanted Democrats to come in and take basically dictatorial power to cement one party rule. When Cuomo warns him that he's just giving all of his critics the proof they need. Everybody sticks We're going to have to blow up the entire system. And you know what we're going to have to do? No, I don't know about You know that. what we're going to Yes, yeah. we, we're going to have to do? You just got to vote. Honestly, from what your closing argument is, you're going to have to get rid of the Electoral College. Because the people... I don't see it. Uh, because the, the minority in this country decides who the judges are and they decide who the president is. If Democrats, if Joe Biden wins, Democrats can sack the courts and they can do that amendment and they can get it passed. I woke up and I saw all these headlines like, Don Lemon is calling for the abolishing uh, the, uh, the Blow electoral it all college. Up. Blow yeah. it all up, and, But said. I was responding to you when you said we no, want no. people with integrity. I wasn't even there. <laughs> no, but let me tell you. So you can't say you want to blow stuff up because you're playing into the narrative. So you can say that, so you can say that, whoa. You can say that, but I can't. See, I would get in trouble because then, you know, Don Lemon is joking about violence. and blah, You have blah, to. Blah, 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 we blah. have to mock it. Make no mistake, all of these people are part of a Marxist cult that wants to mirror the Maoist revolution in China that led to millions dead. I have no doubt that the people pushing this know what they are doing, but they've rationalized in their head that somehow it'll be different when they do it. But you really can't deny the parallels here. You have CRT suddenly and mysteriously being injected into all of our institutions, including the school system, with leftists in our government actually labeling opponents and critics domestic terrorist threats. Critical race theory is in fact derived from the Marxist ideology called critical theory, which was used by Mao to drive his cultural revolution leading to millions dead, justified with critical theory. Mao often talked about the importance of getting the youth to destroy the quote, four olds, which led to the destruction of Buddhist temples, much like college students now are tearing down America's revolutionary history. The powers that are driving all of this use openly Marxist and communist groups like BLM and Antifa to accomplish this task. Americans who escaped communism or lived through Mao have been trying to warn Americans. I think it's time to listen. Teaching training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. Uh, growing up in Mao's China, all this seemed very familiar. The uh, communist regime used the same critical theory to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. Do you see Donald Trump as an authoritarian? Well, I don't, you know, he, if you're authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. But uh, certainly in the United States, with today's uh, condition, you can easily have an authoritarian. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. How so? Many things happen today in the US. This can be compared to cultural revolution in China. Like what? Like people trying to be unified in certain political correctness, that is very dangerous. Well, isn't it also that uh, immigrants like yourself have the perspective of where they came from, that first generation feel, a recognition of what tyranny really looks like? Exactly. You know, the left always talk about, oh, we should do things based on people's living experiences. Guess what? We have first uh, hand of living experiences of living under socialist policies. You know, that's why we want to see lower taxes. We reject uh, expensive welfare state because we lived in those uh, socialist policies before. We see how those policies ruin the people's life and lower people's living standards. It's a slow drip but they're methodically removing American history to be replaced with a state communist religion. Trump knew it, I knew it, we all knew it, and we've been trying to warn people. While the self-titled defenders of democracy constantly lie about it. If we don't stand up for our history, it'll be gone. It's as simple as that. And what's disturbing is that it seems that people have just acquiesced to it. All right, that's all I have for this one. As always, thanks for watching. Please hit that like button, share this video around, and subscribe. And also let me know what you think in the comments.